All right, so continuing on workflow with uh, the Santa Cruz sheet. When I come to assigning locations or jumping into places, I tend to do that all in one shot. You know, the, 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 the shoot is usually all in the same place, and it's simpler to just drag all the photos onto the map uh, in one go. Uh, I don't have to uh, do lift and stamp of the GPS data later. So um, I will make sure I've cleared my setting here. I've got all the images there, and I will also make sure all of my stacks are open. And it looks like that is the case because I don't have that option here. I don't want to miss a photo dragging it in. So um, we pop over to places so we can put these onto a map. I've got nothing um, in this uh, album that's been located yet, so the first thing we'll do is we'll type in Santa Cruz CA, and we'll see where that takes us. All right, Santa Cruz, California. So here's Santa Cruz, the city, and the state beach is right around here. Here we go, natural, natural bridges. So let me zoom in there double-clicking a few times, and so I'd actually parked, oh, somewhere up in this neighborhood up in here, walked down the path, and, you know, kind of curled around here. Up through this way, this is where all these park benches were, and the little trail that we see photographed here, um, these were all right in this area, right there. That's pretty good. This is one of the reasons you kind of want to do your GPS data sooner than later, because you can forget pretty quickly uh, where things, uh, where you were when you took things. Now the rest of these shots um, are either of the natural bridge, which is right here. So you know, this space in the photo is this space between you know, the the outcropping that's still connected to the mainland um, and this this little piece that's broken off. Um, I met someone while I was taking the photos that was explaining this used to be fully connected and there were multiple arches. I guess an earthquake in the, the 60s destroyed uh, that part of it, that connection. So we've got this you know isolated arch that stands by itself. And so I was, whoa, that was uh, not very nice. The uh, pros and cons of having a magic mouse. You know, my finger drags across it the wrong way and I suddenly zoom out. So I had, you know, climbed up on these rocks and walked all along back and forth here looking for, you know, a good vantage point and really decided I needed to be down on the beach, you know, get this, uh, this nice reflection and, you know, if I was lucky, getting some of the sunset color to actually come through beneath the arch. So I was right here and, you know, shooting this way, the sun was setting off to this side here. And for the handful of pictures that I did take, you know, like this, I just pan the camera over this way, took the pictures. So this will become very easy. I just need to select basically everything except these three. Gotta zoom back in again. Thank you, Aperture. And I was right about there. I mean, that's good enough for, uh, for what I need to do. I, I don't have to know the exact latitude and longitude. This is mainly because I like to look at things on the iPad this way. All right, so I've now... I can check to make sure I've got everything tagged. So I can show unplaced images. That's blank. Excellent. Show placed images. I've got everything. Um, it's telling me uh, 74 here and what? Uh, whoa. 3 here. So 3 plus 74 is 77. Pop back out in the browser. 77. That's my sanity check. I can now select all of these. Command 5, setting it to blue. Blue is my tag for needs adjustments. So at this point, um, I definitely will go to my four-star images only, and I will start working on doing adjustments on these. Um, since these are HDRs, uh, and I'll be, you know, maybe doing a quick uh, white balancing on them, and then sending them out for uh, for work in Photomatics, uh, which is you know, the the HDR software that I'm using. Um, that's essentially it. I think uh, maybe as a as a finale to this, maybe something for the blog. I'll work through one or two of these and have the the finalized finalized image uh, as part of the blog, and that would be my last workflow step, just to see what you know what I do now. Um, 
once I'd finished an image, let's say this one in here, you know, this reflection, we've got the surfer coming in from uh, his evening ride. Let's say I'd finished with this one. I'll do a command six, setting the tag to purple, which tells me I'm done. Uh, this step of my workflow used to be I need to export this to a JPEG. I'm really not doing that anymore. Um, I've gotten comfortable enough that you know aperture is stable, and if I need to export the images to JPEG for some like final archiving, like I don't know, you know, 15 years from now, the JPEG standard is going away, or something else is changing, and you know, Camera Raw for uh, a D7000 is no longer supported. I need to get these images saved. You know, I'll deal with it at that time. But uh, my images are getting larger and larger. You know, this one's a 16 megabyte raw file. Um, when I do processing in external uh, packages, you know, I'm not. That's not uncommon. I have you know 100 megabyte uh, master files or original files, I should say. So you know, exporting the JPEGs, it's I don't do it anymore. It's I I, I can't afford the the disk space. It's just uh, an unnecessary step. Okay, uh, pop back in here just to uh, show you that uh, you know, a couple of the images I've processed through uh, the entire workflow. Uh, again, I'm not going to show you every single adjustment here, but uh, you know, just to see um, you know, a couple of examples. So just to filter out of my four-star images, that's where I jump to. So let me go on through and process these. And um, I started with uh, this one here. I'm just going to be highlighted. I'm going to open the stack, Shift-K. So we had, uh, I had um, five or six different exposures, five actually, negative two to plus two. Tone map them, and so it came out of photomatics with something like this, not too bad. Um, you know, subtle, I tend to use tone mapping more just to get even out exposure. I, I, I will very, um, there's two photographers I'll, I'll look at. One is uh, Brian Matias. He'll use tone mapping to really just get an even exposure. Uh, another, another person is Trey Ratcliffe. He'll use um, photomatics and, and tone mapping to almost do a, a final version of the image. I, I tend to land somewhere in between the two of them. That's my personal personal tastes and styles. Um, after it came into uh, photomatics, you know, did some uh, adjustments, some work in perfect effects. I've become a, quite a big fan of that one. And um, you know, we can see you know, that was the end result on that image. And yeah, you know, it came out really nice. It was right what I wanted. I had the reflection here kept a lot of nice texture and detail in the arch itself, really brought out the colors of the sunset. Um, you know, this is how I remember the scene. You know, nice, nice cut line of the waves here. It would have been beautiful if I had a little more curvy wave there, but you know, hey, there's only so much you can ask from Mother Nature. Um, so one other one, you know, this, uh, this sunset was nearly just brilliant on its own. Uh, I think if I, again, look at the stack, I ended up only using the uh, the negative two and negative one, sorry, negative one, zero uh, images for uh, for tone mapping. And you know, that was basically just about it. Everything else was done in aperture. It was uh, you know, a lot of, uh, a lot of um, just boosting the colors uh, with the tone mapping and bringing a little of the detail of the, the rocks and cliffs in here. And I kept it a, a bit more like a painterly type here. Um, I just like the way that looked. Um, so, you know, you'll, you'll see this is where these uh, these two final images ultimately came from. And um, that really is the end of the workflow there. So, um, again, I, I really hope that uh, this is helpful to you. You know, leave a comment or, uh, you know, just come, you know, check me out on Google+, Plus, add me to one of your circles. And, you know, I'd, I'd love to see, uh, you know, photos that you folks work through too. Thanks again. Bye.